But I do think there's a particular kind of synodal listening that we need to do as a church, which is to bring together people who, frankly, are repugnant to each other, <laughs> you know, who can't stand to be in the same room as each other, you know. And I'm talking, I mean, let's just, let's create a couple of caricatures here. You know, the traditionalist who says, you know what, uh, you know, the Council of Trent solved everything. We need to go back to the 1950s where everything was clear and so on. And on the other hand, you got, well, we need, the church needs to look a lot more like the modern world and we need to have, you know, we need to have women priests. And we, you know, both sides have a whole kind of, and completely antithetical to each other. I think we need to bring them together and do listening where we're not we're not trying to solve anything there's no argument we just listen to their hopes their fears their anxieties their dreams and we come to understand why they believe what they believe and and just begin there i think that could be enormously healing for our church to not necessarily agree but be listened to well put it this way in a synodal meeting lasting an hour and a half you can be sure of one thing you're not going to resolve the differences <laughs> between a progressive and a conservative or a progressive and a traditionalist. But what you can do is you can begin to realize that they are not the enemy, that they're coming from a, from a place. You understand why they believe what they believe because you've got to know something of their own interior life, their fears, their hopes, their dreams, and their anxieties. And so once you do that, you realize that actually we're all human and we all have anxieties and hopes and dreams and fears. And that if our faith is the same, if our faith is in Jesus Christ, we believe, you know, then we can be together in our differences, and that's okay.